Well, hey guys, it's Tom here, back in the shop for another video. First off, I want to uh, thank all my new subscribers for finding the channel and hanging out. Hope you guys are uh, enjoying the new content that I'm trying to put out. So I hadn't done a mail call in about uh, four to six weeks. I figured I'd throw one together because it is beautiful outside. I got the doors open. It's like 70 degrees, sun is shining. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it is the middle of November. I mean, I had uh, a fire in the stove last week and running the kerosene heaters when I come down here for just a couple hours because it's in the 40s. Next week is supposed to be down in the 30s. So this nice couple days is just a teaser. It's going to be gone. But I uh, got a few updates to show you around the shop. A little bit of progress here and there. Uh, made some purchases off of eBay. Um, a seller on one of the machinist forums. And also went to a um, like an antique auction craft fair kind of thing down uh, about an hour away in a small town. So picked up a couple goodies. I'll show you that. And um, let's get started. Let me get the camera over there and uh, show you all the, the plunder. <laughs> Guess I'll start with this big bad boy right here. So I did a little horse trade with a fellow forum member on the uh, Hobby Machinist forum. He picked this up in an auction lot with a bunch of stuff. He had no use for it. So it is 18 inches across and 12 inches tall. Nice, nice big angle plate. So I was happy to score this. So, you know, I can use it on my mill. And eventually when I finally acquire a horizontal boring mill then this will obviously come in handy so super pleased to get this big bad boy i uh was able to score this nice little lot of metric taps as i mentioned in the last mail call i'm trying to up my metric tooling game except for this so a guy on the hobby machinist forum had i guess uh scored a huge lot of he had bunch of stuff you know some taps some drills um and then i think maybe some cat tooling and whatnot so i grabbed a grabbed a group of these he was selling them real cheap so got some big ones too like an m24 he threw kind of threw these in with the m20s don't know if i ever use them but you know for a couple bucks i figured why not go ahead and uh, you know grab them while i can and then you know these are probably the, the most useful sizes and he also had this, which is super cool because uh, I do have a project for this. So this is a left-hand thread, Acme, three-quarter number six. So that's going to come in super handy. I am going to uh, probably make a new nut for my um, 7 by 12 bandsaw. And obviously it's a left-handed thread and it's Acme. So this is perfect. I don't have to cut one. I can just use this baby right here and we'll be good to go. So sweet, nice little group. And me and my wife, we went to a vintage market, um, small town, about an hour and 15 minutes away from here across the state line in North Carolina. You know, they closed their main street down and had all these vendors out in the street and they encouraged the shops to stay open and, you know, for everybody to come and, you know, patronize the town. So we drove down there, a lot of crafts and knickknacks, but I was able to pick up a few items. So I picked up this, hopefully you guys can see this, nice Hanson 200 pound scale. That was neat, and also grabbed this old Armstrong wrench. And what's nice about it is this end here is one and one sixteenth, which works perfectly for my A Banny horizontal mill. Look at that. So this will be a wrench I'll use over here. So you know it'll fit the fit the time period, so to speak. You know. A nice big shiny new chrome wrench you know it kind of looks out of place you know you need to be loosening and tightening your nuts with one of these babies right here right so <laughs> glad to score this 
and then also happy to score this white with a flexible shaft I'm going to probably use this on the shaper so and so the last thing I picked up the vendor had this stool here she only wanted 20 bucks for it so I was like oh yeah I'll give you 20 I can't even make it for that it is a nice metal stool you know, don't care really care for the the birdies and the flowers I'm gonna put a uh, a seat cover over it so that won't be a big deal but uh oh, let me put this over here so you can see a little better it looks like, so i can get some light on it it's got a nice nice adjustable acne screw there and it had uh casters on them but they were all broken and in poor shape so i actually have an order from mcmaster car should be coming in today so baby will have some new wheels but it's got that nice wide stance so it's stable so i figured heck yeah i can use this in the shop this next batch of goodies comes from uh, a sale i bought these from a guy on uh, one of the machinist forums he was selling a whole bunch of cutters and i think drill bits and just a, he had a whole big lot of stuff so i've got some horizontal cutters and sizes i didn't have and also picked up some arbor bushings with uh, one inch diameter bores. So, nice addition to the shop. Grab this piece of uh, one inch by one inch Rex 95 high speed steel. I mean, nothing special about it, but what is really cool is the box that it came in. <laughs> Check that beauty out. So, heck, I like the box even more than the piece of high-speed steel. So, this is when they, you know, took pride in their products and even their packaging. Look at this, man. It's just awesome. So, I was tickled that the seller sent the box with it. So, the only real eBay score I got this month is uh, these parallels. So, I was going to make a set for my shaper. Uh, you know, I've got a couple sets, but I was gonna make a different size. And I got on McMaster Car's website and started looking at uh, you know A2 and D2. You know, if I got a piece that's you know comparable to these parallels, which is basically one inch by two inch, you know, a foot long, so either two one foot long sections or a you know two foot long section, it's gonna be like hundred and forty three dollars for that tool steel. So I was like, man, that's nuts. And then I still got to take the time to mill it, you know, harden it, temper it, surface grind it. So I'm like, Psh. So I found these, which is kind of a good oddball size for fifty dollars. So I'm like, Psh, you know, score. So be using these babies on the shaper. I know you guys have seen these generic indexers you know they hold a 5c nothing special about them I and mean, you can pick them up for 50 60 70 bucks you know on ebay and i think probably amazon and you know, other tool distributors but my plan is is to make a basically a spindexer to do od grinding on my new surface grinder so i figured this would be a platform instead of having to make the whole thing you know hopefully i can use a pulley here i've got uh, a sewing machine motor that i uh, bought off ebay coming so once that comes in and then you know i can make a whole unit and i can do some you know, od grinding on some round stuff so that's the plan for a future project so be on the lookout for that i'm not sure how soon i'm going to get to it but uh that should be a fun build well i wasn't expecting this storm today It's been coming down pretty good for the last 15 20 minutes see if i can get you guys a couple shots of uh, mother nature without getting the gopro all wet but i sure did need it this is why you line up your uh, milling machine tables works perfectly to 
support a long piece. So that way you can work on them. Well, trying to get another project wrapped up before old man winter is here. Trying to do a little erosion control. So we are putting these railroad ties down in the front of the small, I guess you'd call it a retaining wall. So hopefully this will help. It's not bad until we get one of those really hard rainstorms and then all the water comes down the road and even though we've kind of got a little bit of a crown there to, to prevent it from coming over you know a hard rain is going to overflow it and it comes rushing down and then comes all the way down here and then down there so hopefully this will uh, you know help with some of the erosion keep the dirt you know up here instead of down there ideally would be to put some sort of catch basin right here and try to grab that water and then you know I guess send it across the field or if we could at least get it down maybe a pipe and shoot it that way and then it runs down there you know how we've naturally made that trough over there that's where the water goes so doing that today it is uh what is today shoot it's like the first of October wow like I said Gonna be winter here before we know it. Well, we got it wrapped up yesterday. So that's what it looks like. I think we did a pretty good job. Got them all straight and level and kind of looks like we know what we're doing. <laughs> so hopefully this will help with the erosion and control some of that flow of water that you know wants to go over the bank. Let me get up here, show you what we got going on, give you a long perspective. So, as you can see, how we graded it. So, what water gets here, it's got a natural slope, it should shoot straight down. And then I put that uh, railroad tie there across to help with the flow. We'll just kind of choke it down. So that way it won't flow like a, a monsoon river you know hopefully that'll that'll do well I'm getting ready to drill a couple holes and put a couple spikes in this one just to make sure she doesn't move so one project checked off the list well the wood stove has been broken in a few weeks ago uh, my buddy michael came up here and gave me a hand we were able to get her plumbed in. I don't know how well you're going to see that. It may be getting blown out from the sun coming into the door, but so we got it through the wall. It's a uh, triple wall insulated, that um, DuraVent kit we used. And I've gotten a little bit of wood and Hopefully you can see the stack, got about uh, three feet above the roof line, so it should have a good draft. It seems to be working well. Got it braced up pretty good because we've got the high winds. So, pretty tickled to actually have me a heat source now. Just trying to uh, accumulate the wood since I don't really have any woods on my property. I don't have a tree I can chop down. I've got to uh, buy it. So this is all leftover scrap from building the shop and I just made this uh, makeshift container to hold it all with the old pallets and I've been like I said just accumulating a little bit but uh, so this will be my main heat source can't wait to use her and get that fire roaring and, and just get it nice and toasty in here and just have that cool you know wood stove feel well guys I think that's gonna be a wrap I appreciate you watching hanging out with me as always i uh, enjoy the comments you know leave the thumbs up and as i said look for uh, wednesdays i'm gonna try to uh, be regular and post a, a new video every wednesday so be on the lookout for that and i'll see you guys later
Take care. So I was able to pick up some horizontal color, cut colors. Damn.